Why is it that the most important thing in our life is often the thing we know the least about? In this episode, let's look deeper at knowing you're saved. Once again, let's establish the fact that all of our discussions rely on the foundation that Jesus is the Son of God, foretold of in the Scriptures, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, and was crucified to pay the penalty for our sin. Then Jesus rose again from death to life and will return one day. And thanks to Jesus, we have the gospel, the good news, that you can be changed and you don't have to stay the same anymore. You don't have to live separated from God and you can be delivered from your daily sin. This season, we have covered Ephesians 2.8, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And we have looked in detail at the different aspects of being saved, sin, salvation, grace, faith, hearing, understanding, obedience, and righteousness. But the question remains, how do you know you are saved? Many people believe they are saved at the word of a priest, a pastor, religious teacher, or a parent. Others are convinced that they are saved because they have prayed the sinner's prayer. Some have even been taught to drive an imaginary stake in the ground with the date they prayed the sinner's prayer. They use this as a signpost to Satan to stop doubt from creeping in. But without the voice of God, these fabricated concepts will only hinder the Holy Spirit from convicting you if you aren't really saved in the first place. The bottom line is false Christians convince themselves and tell themselves in many different ways that they are saved so they can feel okay. Harumph! So it comes down to this. Did God tell you that you were saved? I'm going to ask that again. Have you heard God himself tell you you are saved? Romans 8.16 states, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now this takes honesty. When God delivers you, he will speak to you and in some way tell you that you are his child and he wants you to trust and agree with him. Now, this is not pretend or make believe no matter how much you want to convince yourself. If you are his, God will tell you. This is just a continuation of the relationship you have already developed with God. He will have spoken to you many times, and you will have listened and trusted His voice in obedience. This process does not change. As Paul wrote, it has never been invalidated. If you believe you are saved because someone other than God Himself told you so, then you have placed your faith in them instead of God. And that is not salvation. That is not being delivered from your self-centered sin. When you hear God, you won't need a signpost. When you hear God, you won't need someone else to persuade you. And when you hear God, you won't have to try to convince yourself. When God says you're his child, you can know it and trust it. Romans 10, 17 states, faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. Now, this may seem obvious to say, but your faith must be in Jesus and no one else. This means trusting the voice of God alone for your salvation. And that salvation is a very real, very honest relationship with the living, breathing and speaking Lord. Okay, so let's say you are starting to understand all of this. Often those wanting to know if they are saved can get antsy. They want to know so badly that they are right with God that they will actually stop trusting and let the religious flesh take over. Then the flesh will start grasping at straws and will even attempt to put words in the Lord's mouth. 
Proverbs 30, verse 6. Do not add to his words, or he will reprove you, and you will be proved a liar. Why make it up? Convincing yourself that you are okay is just the self-righteous flesh, and it only serves to deceive you. Note, nothing is so dishonest as the religious flesh. Well, clearly you haven't met my husband. As you wait on the Lord, would you be willing to trust God even though he tells you the truth that you are going to hell? It may seem strange, but quite often learning that fear is not faith is part of the path to deliverance. And when in doubt, here are a few more verses that show the lifestyle of true Christianity. You can't say that because you didn't quote the scripture verse. 1 John 3.10 Oh, okay. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. So how obvious? Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. And how did Jesus walk? Well, he said, for I did not speak of my own accord. But the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. So Jesus walked in obedience to the voice of the Father. And just to round out the idea of knowing you are saved, let's read 1 John 2, 3-6. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did.